In less than 10 minutes today, we're going to cover what Lightroom is and how you should approach it. It's basic workflow and theory today, but this is going to keep you efficient, organized, and on top of it. This is really important to your, your Lightroom fundamental knowledge. So even if you think you know this, check it out and, and give it 10 minutes just to make sure you're on the right page and approaching everything right. Let's get into it. Hey! Hey! Essentials! What is Adobe Lightroom? Lightroom is an application by Adobe that allows you to organize and edit your photos. It combines raw developing tools, tools and advanced storage and organization techniques. In this video, we're going to cover what a catalog is, how many catalogs you should have, what modules are, where photos go, how to set up folders, how to find photos, how to move files, and how to edit photos. So what is a Lightroom catalog? A Lightroom catalog is a database that stores your develop settings, your collections, your metadata, and your previews. So it's really made of three files. One is the catalog file, which is very important, and then the previews. I recommend putting your catalog on the fastest drive you can. It's going to be reading the previews from here, and you want this to be the quickest drive you have. Also, if you put it on an external drive, like a portable SSD, you want to make sure it's connected through your fastest connection. <laughs> Fastest connection. So you don't want to connect a super fast external drive with a cord that's going to slow everything down, USB 1 or something like that. So you want to use the fastest, latest connections you can if you're using external drives. I store my catalog on a portable micro SSD. It's a 500 gigabyte drive. I'll put a, a link into it. It's great because I can just take that thing with me and I can easily Velcro it to the back of my laptop screen or my desktop and it's ready to go. And then of course I back that up onto another drive. Cool. If you move your catalog in the finder and then you open up Lightroom, Lightroom is gonna give you an alert saying your catalog was not found. <laughs> so you wanna just make sure you keep your catalog in the same place and if you do happen to move it, you need to tell Lightroom where it went. How many catalogs should I have? Now this is very important because some people think they should have a catalog for every year or every project or every category of projects. No, you want to have one, 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 sorry. You want to have one Lightroom catalog. This is important because then you could spread your photos across this one catalog. You have different projects and you can reference them. You could take settings from one photo done a year ago and grab them, put them on a new photo. Really, there's no reason to have uh, multiple catalogs anymore. There used to be some sort of limit to how many photos you can have, but now that's been eliminated and... There's no speed benefit from having a smaller catalog. You're gonna have to wait just as long for your one-to-ones to load. I'm sure when you click on all photos, it might be a little quicker if there's only one in there instead of 100,000, but still, it's really unnoticeable any kind of speed improvements. All right, so modules. The modules are how Lightroom defines workspaces. So you really have a library module and a develop module. If you hit G or E, G will show you a grid view and it'll show you the entire folder that you're looking at in a grid view. You hit E to look at a photo, evaluate it. You hit D for develop, and that'll take you into your edit mode. So these are just what they call workspaces. Uh, there's more of them. I got rid of them. I took them off my little toolbar. Uh, I don't really need, uh, I sometimes use maps. I keep that up there if I need to add a geotag to something, but I really don't print inside a Lightroom or do web books or social. I usually just export it from Lightroom. It's really library mode and develop mode. Okay, so where do your photos go? This is really important because Lightroom lets you choose where to save your photos. So you wanna take some time and think about how you're gonna set up your folder structure so you don't have to change it later. So you can continue one kind of naming convention forever, ever, ever, ever. No. But seriously, you want to have something that you could stick to that's going to help you find your photos later. If you move a photo inside the Finder, not inside Lightroom, if you move a photo inside the Finder, it's going to go offline in Lightroom. And if you move a photo inside Lightroom, it's going to actually move the photo in the Finder to that other folder. So this is very important to know. If you move a photo in the Finder, you're going to have to relink it later, and that's a pain in the butt. So what kind of drive do you want to put your photos on? You want to put them on, again, the fastest drive you can. It doesn't have to be as fast as what your catalog is on, but if it could be, that'd be nice. Uh, now, realistically, 
the biggest drive is the most important here is because you want to have your photos on one drive or as few as possible. I have my photos across six, seven drives sometimes. That's horrible. <laughs> really, uh, ideally I have mine across uh, three or four drives and that's a, a fast drive for my local files and then a slower, bigger drive for my archive and scrap drives for video. Let's get back to how you should set up your folders. I broke it down into categories. So first I have a folder that's raw media and that's just where I'm gonna keep all of my Lightroom raw files in this Encompass folder. And usually it's a drive dedicated to Lightroom, but beyond that, it's a folder. So I have a folder called raw media and in there I have subject. And the subjects for me personally, I have like still photos, travel photos, aerial photos, payphone photos. Pay phone photos, client photos, time lapse, and video. So then inside each of those subject folders, I have a folder for different locations, and then inside those location folders by year, and then if it's a, a popular enough subject, then by month and event day. Uh, sometimes it just goes from year to event day if I don't go there um, but once ever. So. It's just a structure that lets me easily uh, grab a root folder and see a bunch of places I've been or years that I've been places or an entire subject and gets me right to where, where, where I need to be. It makes me find photos a lot quicker than if I put them in one folder or some sort of iPhoto sh cool. So you don't have to do exactly this, but if you look at this, this might inspire you to be a little more organized here. Back to moving files, if you're moving a couple files, you want to definitely do it inside Lightroom. But if you're moving a folder with thousands of files that's going to take a while to get over there from one drive to another, not on the same drive, you want to copy in Finder. This is important because what Lightroom is doing is it's copying and deleting files. And if this process was interrupted or your computer crashed for some unrelated reason while this is happening, you don't know if it copied all the files. This happened to me and a bunch of stuff went offline when I was trying to transfer stuff from one server to another. Don't do that. What you want to do is you want to copy it from one place to another, make a one-to-one, -one, let it finish, and then relink the folder inside Lightroom. You can right-click on a folder and change the source. And renaming too, when you're renaming stuff, definitely have to do it inside Lightroom. Uh, if you rename it outside of Lightroom, it's going to go offline. There's great renaming tools inside Lightroom that are gonna give you much more powerful renaming anyways. So do all your renaming inside Lightroom. By sorting by metadata, you can find stuff by date, camera, lens, exposure, ISO, basically any kind of setting that you could think of, you could find everything with um, all the way open at 1.8 or F22, or you could find anything from April 3rd or everything from 2015 that you flagged. So you can use this metadata uh, filter to really help yourself find something that's, that's lost through the cracks. So it's a great way to search is by metadata. And then how do you edit your photos? So the shortcut is D for develop mode. And inside here, this is where you're gonna do your edits. And edits inside Lightroom are non-destructive. So anytime you slide a slider, you could always go back and reset the photo and go back to the original. And these edits are stored as part of the Lightroom catalog or an XMP file. So these edits are non-destructive. And if you open up a raw photo in Photoshop, it's gonna create a new file. And this is a huge file. It's gonna be bigger than the raw file already. So Lightroom really saves a lot of space by managing this size. Thanks for watching guys. I know we covered a ton of information, so feel free to come back and look at this. Check out my webpage uh, for more details. I typed everything out and have screenshots, so there's even more information there and links to more videos and more tips. So cool, don't forget to like and subscribe.